Four kilometers off the coast of Japan, there is a massive giant airport floating in the sea. This airport is so large that it can be seen from the International Space Station. Not only it is the world's first airport built in the sea, but the bridge that connects it to the land is the longest bridge of its kind. The airport's state-of-the-art design made it the largest man-made island at that time, specifically constructed for this airport. The entire project cost $20 billion, making it an engineering masterpiece. However, during construction, a major flaw was left that has caused the airport to gradually sink into the sea over time. Why did Japan take the risk of building an airport in the sea instead of on land? And what engineers are planning to do to prevent it from sinking? Welcome back to Simply Factual. When it comes to future technology and astonishing structures, it's impossible not to mention Japan. Japan introduced the world's first high-speed train, Tokaido Shinkansen, just 18 years after being completely devastated by nuclear attacks during World War II, astounding the entire world. While the rest of the world talks about shock absorbers for cars, Japan is the only country where it is mandatory to install shock absorbers under skyscrapers to protect them from earthquakes. However, not all of Japan's engineering projects hit the mark. Mistakes do happen that cause projects to fail, and some of these mistakes occurred during the construction of Japan's Kansai International Airport. Located in the Kansai region, this airport is close to Osaka City, Kobe, and Kyoto, where there are already three airports within a 50-kilometer radius. However, due to Japan's increasing population and economic demands, there was a need for another airport. The problem was that the existing airports were surrounded by dense populations, making expansion impossible. On the other hand, the available land in the Kansai region was being used by farmers who refused to give it up for the airport. Thus, the only option left for Japan to boost its exports and properly facilitate international tourists was to somehow build an airport in the sea. The Osaka Bay area is about 60 feet deep, which meant that an island would first have to be created to build the airport. Construction of Kansai International Airport began in 1987, with an initial cost estimate of $8 billion. However, due to project complications, the cost increased to $20 billion. If it had been built on land, the cost would have been even higher because compensating farmers for their land would have required huge amount of money. Engineers designed two islands for Kansai Airport, one four kilometers long and the other five kilometers long. These islands would stand primarily on seawalls. The sea here is around 60 feet deep and filling it required 750 million cubic feet of soil, excavated from the mountains. Japan had previously constructed many islands, but the mud at the bottom of the sea in this area was different. Building a superstructure on this type of mud was risky. Engineers took samples of the mud for testing and calculations. After calculations, some experts estimated that the airport would sink 19 feet while others predicted it would sink more than 25 feet. Interestingly, both predictions indicated that the airport would sink. To save costs, officials designed the island and the airport foundation, assuming a 19 feet sinkage, which was their biggest mistake. The first stage of the construction process was to harden the ocean floor. One million drilling pipes were driven into the ocean floor and vibrated to compress the loose sand, significantly hardening the floor. After drilling, special water-absorbing sand was placed in one million drilling holes. For the 24-kilometer-long seawall, 48,000 concrete blocks were used. The seawall was constructed by filling joint steel chambers with rocks and debris and then placing concrete blocks between these chambers. The primary purpose of this seawall was to protect the airport from typhoon and the massive waves it creates. Inside the seawall, soil was added to raise the island's height 65 feet above sea level. Once the island was formed, construction workers began building the airport and the runway. By 1990, a bridge connecting Osaka to the airport was also completed, costing about $1 billion. It was anticipated that Kansai International Airport would sink, 
but engineers and officials mistakenly believed it would only sink 19 feet. During the construction only, the island had already sunk about 34 feet. The island, which was initially raised to 65 feet above sea level, had decreased by 34 feet even before the airport was launched. Engineers estimated that in 50 years, the island would stabilize at a height of 13 feet above sea level, which is the minimum height required to protect the airport from flooding. However, their estimate proved wrong, as what they expected in 50 years happened in just 10 years. By the launch of the airport's second terminal, the island had sunk to 13 feet above sea level, and it continues to sink dangerously every day. It is now believed that by 2056, the airport would sink an additional 13 feet, reaching sea level. To counter this, the airport's seawall is continuously elevated, with $150 million spent so far. But it's not just the seawall being reinforced. Hydraulic jacks have been installed in the airport's foundation, which are raised every two years. Every two years, the entire foundation of the airport is lifted by about one and a half inches. This doesn't prevent the sinking, but delays it. All the measures taken to save the island and the airport are temporary. Japan knows that one day the airport will be lost. By spending millions of dollars annually, they are not only saving the airport, but also buying time to possibly build another airport in the Kansai region. While the threat of sinking looms over the airport, nature also poses a threat. In 2018, a typhoon hit Osaka Bay, raising the sea level for 10 hours and flooding Kansai Airport. The runways were submerged, and the parked planes suffered significant damage. As a result, all airport operations had to be halted. Kansai International Airport may be sinking, but the Japanese see this as a victory rather than a defeat because they dared to achieve what no other nation has done before. Thank you for tuning into this informative video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to Simply Factual for more interesting content, and ring the notification bell to stay updated.